This is the story of Jessica Edwards, a devoted mother, a loving sister, and a woman known for her kindness and bright spirit. What should have been a joyful Mother's Day celebration quickly turned tragic when a disagreement over an unexpected gift escalated into a heated argument with her husband, Taj Hutchinson. A simple disappointment spiraled out of control, leading to a violent confrontation that took Jessica's life. I feel empty. My mom feels empty. I feel like I lost my best friend. I feel like I just died with her, honestly. We can't let a monster back into the community because then it's going to let people know that it's okay for this to happen to someone else. And imagine if it happened to someone else's loved one. It's not right. Welcome to Explore Crimes. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon for more videos. Jessica Edwards, 30, grew up in Connecticut, where she built a life centered around family, friends, and her dreams for the future. She attended East Hartford High School, where she was known for her warm personality and ability to bring a smile to anyone's face. After graduating in 2009, Jessica pursued a career in early childhood education at Manchester Community College, earning an associate's degree. Later, she felt called to healthcare and recently completed her studies as a respiratory therapist, preparing to help those in need and make a positive impact in her community. Though she was busy with her career dreams and plans, love found Jessica when she met Taj Hutchinson, a U.S. Army soldier. Their relationship began with a spark that felt natural and exciting. They connected over shared family values and dreams for the future. Taj had a playful side that matched Jessica's warm and caring personality, and it wasn't long before she introduced him to her family. Jessica's family, who had always been protective of her, embraced Taj because he seemed devoted to her, often posting affectionate photos and videos of their time together on social media. His playful nature and affection toward Jessica were apparent in these snapshots of their lives giving friends and family a glimpse of what seemed like a happy couple. As their relationship deepened, they talked about a future together, marriage, children, and the promise of a family life filled with love and laughter. Taj, at 22, was younger than Jessica, but he seemed ready to build a life with her. After dating for a period, Taj proposed, and Jessica, hopeful for a bright future with him, said yes. They were married soon after, and Jessica's family and friends celebrated the union, believing she had found someone who would cherish her. The couple shared photos from their wedding, looking happy and in love, smiling as they embraced the start of their new life together. Soon after the wedding, Jessica discovered she was pregnant, bringing joy to the couple and their families. She was thrilled to be starting a family, and the excitement was mutual. Taj posted about the pregnancy with pride. Jessica embraced every moment, from decorating a nursery to preparing for motherhood. She took on the role with the same dedication and love she had always shown in her life. When their son was born, it felt like the completion of a beautiful journey. Friends and family saw them as a picture-perfect family, and they posted happy photos and videos of Taj playing with their baby boy, showing a tender side. He was seen as a great father according to pictures and videos posted on social media. Mother's Day was meant to be a special day for Jessica, her first one as a mother, and she looked forward to feeling appreciated for all she did as a mom. She had hoped for a thoughtful gesture, something that would make her feel seen and celebrated. Instead, her husband Taj gave her a guinea pig, an unexpected gift that caught Jessica completely off guard. She was disappointed as the gift felt impersonal and didn't reflect the kind of Mother's Day she had imagined. Jessica had hoped for a relaxing day or a small gift that showed thoughtfulness maybe even a simple outing to the nail salon to unwind. The disappointment quickly turned to frustration as Jessica's reaction seemed to irritate Taj. The small misunderstanding grew into a heated argument as each felt unappreciated in their own way. Jessica felt hurt that Taj hadn't put more thought into her special day while Taj became defensive, taking her reaction as criticism. What started as a minor disagreement over a gift turned into a tense exchange that carried over to the next day. The next morning, with tensions still high from their unresolved argument, Jessica and Taj found themselves once again in the midst of a heated confrontation. Jessica, wanting to feel understood and appreciated, tried to address how she felt, but the conversation quickly took a darker turn as their emotions spiraled out of control. According to Taj's later account, the argument became physical that morning, 
He claimed that Jessica had grabbed a knife in the heat of the moment, which led him to wrestle with her, trying to take it away. In the struggle, he forced her to the ground, pinning her down by pressing his knee on her neck and back. Taj later confessed that he held her down until she stopped moving. When he realized she was no longer responsive, the weight of what had happened began to settle in. Calling for help, Taj panicked. He wrapped Jessica's body in a blanket and left her there, while their infant son remained in another room, unaware of the tragedy that had just unfolded. Throughout that day, Jessica's family became increasingly worried. She hadn't answered their calls or messages, which was completely unlike her. Concerned, her sister Yannick decided to visit Jessica's home to check on her. When Yannick arrived, she saw Taj hurriedly covering something in his Jeep with a blanket. She immediately sensed that something was wrong. Tash, avoiding her questions regarding where her sister was, he claimed Jessica had left with someone, and he did not know who the person was. His behavior made Yannick very uneasy. Taj quickly drove off before she could find out what was covered in the back of the Jeep. Yannick immediately called the police and reported her sister missing and told them what she saw in his Jeep. They immediately opened an investigation and began searching for Jessica. In a strange twist later that night, Taj walked into the East Hartford Police Department barefoot to report Jessica missing. He told officers that she had left their home that morning with someone, but he couldn't say who or provide any details. His lack of emotion combined with his inconsistent story raised red flags. Officers noted the scratches on his face, which he awkwardly tried to explain away by claiming he'd scratched himself while fixing his truck. But as investigators looked closer, none of his explanations held up. His truck showed no signs of being worked on, and his story had too many gaps to ignore. Jessica's family were relentless, organizing search efforts and working with the police to piece together what had happened. The Connecticut State Police were assisting South Windsor Police, along with their canine units, searching the condo complex that she lived in with her husband, the Cinnamon Springs Condo Complex here in South Windsor. They did execute a search warrant at that time for not only the house that the couple shared together, but also three vehicles, including that of Jessica Edwards, as well as her husband. We don't know what was found, if anything was found during that search warrant being executed. While Jessica's family and police were desperately searching for her, Taj went on social media, posting a message that painted a picture of a worried husband. He wrote, It's another lonely and worrisome night without you, my love. Our son and I miss you so much. I don't have an appetite to eat or sleep knowing that you aren't here with me. Every time I come home, you were always there taking care of our beautiful son that we created. His post continued, saying how broken and shattered he felt without her pleading for her to come back safely. To those who saw it, his words seemed like a genuine plea, portraying him as a grieving husband. But as days went by, his lack of emotion in person and inconsistencies in his story only raised more suspicions. The contrast between his online message and his behavior during the investigation left family and friends questioning the truth behind his words. The police also obtained cell phone location data from Taj's phone which showed he had been near a wooded area in East Hartford on the day Jessica disappeared. Acting on this lead, police searched the area and discovered Jessica's body on May 21st. She had been left in the bushes, her life taken in a brutal, senseless act. After Jessica's body was found, Taj eventually confessed to the police, admitting that he was responsible for her death. He told officers that their argument had turned violent, leading to a struggle that ended Jessica's life. In a panicked attempt to cover up what he had done, Taj wrapped her body in a blanket, drove to a secluded wooded area, and left her there. Shortly after disposing of her body, he went straight to the police station, where he reported Jessica missing. For Mother's Day, Hutchinson bought Edward's guinea pigs as a gift and she was angry about it. On Mother's Day, their argument led to a physical confrontation. According to police, he said he pushed her, which caused her ear to bleed. The next day on Monday morning, according to the warrant, their arguing continued and this time, she said Edwards hit him in the head with a laptop, grabbed a kitchen knife, and he pinned her to the ground. Eventually, she stopped moving and died. Later that same day, Edward's sister went to Hutchinson's home on Cinnamon Springs Road in South Windsor. Police say she told them she saw in the trunk of his Jeep what appeared to be a blanket covering a body. As she demanded him to open up the trunk, Hutchinson sped off. 
She also told police she found divorce papers filled out by Edwards but was never filed. In the documents, he went on to say he drove to a random GPS location and dragged the body to a wooded area, which is where Edwards was eventually found on Friday by Driver Road in East Hartford. Karen Prescott, a spokesperson for the family and founder of Power Up Manchester, sharing strong words in court. He should be denied bail the same way the family was denied the truth when they asked him what time J.E. left the house. The warrant explained Hutchinson's statements not lining up with what really happened. The following Tuesday, after Hutchinson says he dumped Edward's body, police say he never asked for updates on his wife's disappearance and even asked officers about Connecticut laws regarding airsoft and pellet guns. Police saying they found this strange as he was more concerned about that than finding his missing wife. The chief medical examiner's office revealed Edwards died from compression to her neck and torso. Hutchinson is due back in court next month. And coming up at five, we hear from South Windsor police on where this investigation now stands and how their good old police work led to Hutchinson's arrest. I'm live in South Windsor, Carmen Chow, Fox 61 News. Following the discovery of Jessica's body in Taj's confession, police swiftly arrested him, initially charging him with manslaughter. The arrest came as a relief to Jessica's grieving family, who had suspected Taj's involvement from the beginning. However, when they learned the initial charge was only manslaughter, the family felt a deep sense of frustration and disappointment. To them, the charge seemed insufficient, not fully capturing the horrific loss they had suffered. Jessica's family rallied for justice, advocating for the charge to be upgraded to murder. They wanted the legal system to recognize the gravity of what had happened and to hold Taj fully accountable. Their determination, along with support from the community, eventually led to an upgraded charge of murder, along with additional charges for tampering with evidence and risking injury to a child. You can see this White House behind me. That's where police spent hours with Hutchinson inside before he was taken into custody just about an hour ago at around 9 o'clock tonight. We have some video of the moments that he was escorted out of the home in handcuffs by two police officers and placed into an unmarked vehicle. And we know that the 22-year-old is charged with manslaughter but could be facing more charges pending the results of the autopsy. Fox 61 also has exclusive video from earlier today when we saw police talking with him outside of the home, around the back of the house near the garage. We were also here when a baby was taken out of this home. We saw a man carry the baby into a car with state plates. They drove off with a Manchester police car following closely behind. Jessica Edwards was a mom to a seven-month-old baby, but police could not confirm if that was the child we saw carried out of this home. This is a residential area, and people here told me they had heard about Edwards because her family had been in the neighborhood recently. The sister had walked through our neighborhood last week knocking on doors, asking if we had seen anything suspicious or anything like that. She had told us that um, her sister's mother-in-law lived in the neighborhood. Police say that Hutchinson is being held on a $1 million bond and he is expected to be arraigned in court on Monday. A lot of new developments, Ben and Jen. The judge raised Hutchinson's bond to $1.5 million. South Windsor police also releasing an arrest warrant this morning. We're in it. Police say Hutchinson admitting to killing Edwards during an argument. Now you can see behind me here outside of their home graduation balloons and candles as Edwards was supposed to graduate next month. I feel empty. My mom feels empty. I feel like I lost my best friend. I feel like I just died with her, honestly. Family members of Jessica Edwards showed up in numbers for 22-year-old Todd Hutchinson's arraignment at Manchester Superior Court. Prior to the hearing, community members stood outside with signs, hoping Hutchinson is denied bail. Magenta Ashley, a longtime friend of Edwards, telling Fox 61 she is just speechless, wanting to know how and why Hutchinson lied during the duration Edwards was gone. How can someone pretend that they didn't know what was going on with her and all this time they knew what the heck was going on? Like, you must have played it out real good for thinking nobody was going to come out and do nothing. As the case moved forward, Jessica's family and friends gathered at the courthouse, speaking out about the need for justice and for more awareness of domestic violence, all while remembering Jessica and the life she was taken from far too soon. Jessica's family and friends gathered at Nevers Park for a heartfelt vigil to honor her memory. Surrounded by candles flickering in the evening light, 
the community came together to show their love for Jessica and support for her grieving family. Her loved ones spoke about Jessica's warmth, kindness, and her dedication as a mother, recalling the joy she brought to everyone around her. The vigil was a bittersweet moment, filled with both sorrow and strength, as the community pledged to remember Jessica and advocate for those facing similar struggles. The atmosphere was one of unity, with a shared hope that her story would bring awareness to the need for action against domestic violence. And following this tragic end to the search for Jessica, the community coming together in South Windsor over the weekend for a vigil, and that is where Jessica was remembered as a loving mother, a sister, a daughter, and friend. As the community continues to mourn the tragic loss of Jessica Edwards, we extend our heartfelt wishes that her family may find peace and healing in the love and memories they shared with her. Jessica's kindness, her laughter, and her dedication as a mother touched the lives of many, leaving an imprint that will never fade. May her family find strength in each other and in the support of those around them as they navigate this difficult journey. May Jessica rest in peace and may her story serve as a reminder of the importance of compassion, resilience, and the ongoing fight to end domestic violence. Thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next video.